I'm going to use the incredibly popular Python Fast API framework and the requests module to dive deep into how those open telemetry distributed traces actually get built. The technical details here apply to any language. So even if you're not using, you know, Python Fast API and requests, you'll still get value out of this video and find it useful. By the end of the video, you'll know exactly what context propagation and the trace parent header are and how they function together to make distributed traces in open telemetry work. So time is short, let's get straight into it. I've got two microservices in this demo, but the concepts apply to any number of hops and any technology, as I've said, uh, regardless of the language or where they're hosted. These could be both on localhost or uh, across the world. Now, in my case, they're both written in Python using the fast API framework and the request module, as I've said, to make the calls from app one to app two. App one is listening on 8080 and app two is listening on 8090. Now, when we send a request to app one, app one calls app two and the return value and the response code from app two is sent back to app one and that's what we see in the curl. From a telemetry perspective, obviously what I want is a single end-to-end -end view of this request chain, uh, starting from app one, obviously showing me the entire call chain across app two uh, and back again, and all of the technical information tied together in one view. So let's dive into the admittedly very basic code. As you can see, app one uh, receives a request from me. It simply does a get call to app two on port 8090. Some content is returned from app two, which app one then sends back to me, as I've said. Now, there is a GitHub repo, by the way. Have a look in the comments. So all of this uh, code is open to you. Both app one and app two are instrumented with open telemetry using the fast API instrumenter, which is built and provided by the open telemetry community. So that should get us distributed traces as a kind of one liner straight out of the box. The traces point to localhost 4318, so let's start Jaeger as a collector and backend to receive the telemetry. Jaeger's running and we're good to go. Let's start app 1 and start app 2, and now use curl to hit the app 1 endpoint. It worked. Fantastic. Let's have a look into Jaeger. Go to localhost 16686 and we see Jaeger tracing itself, plus our two services, app one and app two. That's good, the data that proves the data is getting to uh, Jaeger from our applications. Now app one has a trace containing three spans, so does app two. And by the way, if you don't know the difference between spans and traces, I've got a video linked above uh, that goes into that in some detail. So go check that out first and then come on back here. But it doesn't look quite right. It's almost there, but they're not combined, the two traces. We've got a trace in app one with three spans and a, tra a separate trace in app two. And what we were expecting was a single end-to-end -end view. So let's have a look at some of the debug output. Now we see a trace ID and a span ID and trace flags from app one. And we also see that app one is doing a get request to localhost 8090. Perfect, we knew that uh, because that's the app two endpoint. Jumping into app two, we see it successfully received the call from somewhere and sent data back. And we also see a trace ID and a span ID. The problem is that app two is generating a new trace ID. If you look closely at the trace ID from app one and app two, there are actually different IDs. And that is what's causing this split view, this dual trace in Jaeger. Now in technical terms, app two does not have the context that it's part of a larger trace. So how do we actually fix that? Well, in this case, it's actually quite easy. We use the requests instrumenter. Again, it comes from the community as a one-liner. And this package is responsible for adding all of the required context onto any calls that the request module makes when we use that module to do the get from app one to app two. So let's restart Jaeger to get rid of all the old data so we're not confused. Let's uncomment the include and the requests instrument align and restart app one. I 
I'm now going to send a new curl request to app one on 8080 and refresh Jaeger. Again, I see three services, but this time I've got a single trace with seven spans. And if you look at that, I see exactly what I expect to see, a proper, complete, full end-to-end -end journey across my systems. So what actually happened? Let's really, really dig in now and, and dissect this and look at what's going on. Look at the app one logs. It looks very similar to the first run, except there is a new header value here called trace parent when we call app two, and that's the secret. Have a closer look at that trace parent header value. It has a certain format. The first two digits are the version. Now, from the W3C, we're all still at version 00, so expect this to be 00. After that dash comes another random looking thing. That's the trace ID. It should be identical to the trace ID in the console output. There's another dash, and that is the parent span ID. Notice it's slightly different to the one printed above in the console output, since the request instrument it does some wrapping uh, and generates a span of its own, which is transparent to us. So unfortunately, we're not actually logging that span ID. The final part of trace parent is the trace flags field. It's an 8-bit field, meaning 00 to FF. So if everything, all the flags were set, it would have a value of FF. Long story short, this composite trace parent key, uh, you know, of the trace ID and the parent span and the flags gets added to the outgoing request as the trace parent header. Switching to the app two logs now, we can see that the header has been received. And so here's the key. The Python instrumentation code on app two will first attempt to extract the trace parent, uh, extract the trace ID and the parent span from the trace parent header. And if it can do this, it won't generate its own. Thus, it'll just reuse those values. And this is how Jaeger is able to show everything end to end because everything has the same trace ID. So to summarize, to get cross service traces stitched together, you know, correctly stitched together, you must ensure that the trace ID and the parent span are passed to the downstream service. Now, Obviously, you can do this yourself, or you can rely on the auto, auto instrumentation libraries as I've done, and they'll do it for you. In HTTP systems, as you've seen, this information is passed in the trace parent header. In non-HTTP systems, the methods are going to vary, but as long as you can somehow arrange to pass that information between the services, open telemetry will work for you. What I have seen and what I would um, check is that if you're expecting things to be stitched and they're not, double check that some intermediate component like a load balancer or a WAF isn't stripping out those headers. It's very common. Everything is set up and the developers are saying it's, it's fine. Um, and there's a component in the middle stripping out those headers. And as you've seen, that's going to cause kind of split brain dual traces. Now, the information we're passing, the trace ID, the parent span, etc., is called the context. The context is that we've already started a trace. The way we transmit this information is called the propagation mechanism. So in our case, the propagation mechan mechanism is the trace parent header and the HTTP protocol. Another important note is that OpenTelemetry is not doing the stitching together. Jaeger just receives multiple separate spans or the pieces. And so it's up to Jaeger or whatever backend system you're using to make sense of those and stitch them together visually and do any sort of processing, you know, alerting, baselining that the backend is capable of doing. I hope this deep dive into open telemetry, the trace parent, and how it actually works under the hood was helpful, not only you know to build systems, but also to debug them if something is going wrong. Thank you very much for your time. Let me know in the comments if you like these deeper technical dives or uh, you prefer the kind of higher level uh, topics. And obviously I'll do more content like that. But until next time, have fun and I'll see you soon.